Hello everyone and welcome back to DBX Labs. Today's video is going to be on making thermite from dirt and subsequently making iron from dirt. Now many of you likely already know that thermite is a highly exothermic reaction between a metal oxide and a more reactive metal powder. Also known as a Goldschmidt reaction, thermite can progress above 2000 degrees Celsius while burning. The mechanism behind this is a powerful redox reaction where the more reactive metal powder, typically aluminum powder, replaces a less reactive metal in a bond with oxygen. This means that the aluminum is being oxidized by the metal oxide itself, releasing a ton of energy and thereby a ton of heat. By oxidizing aluminum, you're also reducing the metal ion that was in combination with the oxygen, and generally you reduce this metal ion all the way down to its metallic form. This allows you to produce a variety of metals fairly pure just by reacting their metal oxides with aluminum powder. Now while the most conventional thermite is red iron oxide thermite consisting of red iron oxide Fe2O3 and aluminum powder in a 3 to 1 ratio, there are quite a variety of thermites including explosive thermites like copper oxide thermite, as well as boosted thermites like thermate, which has barium nitrate added to it to increase the burn rate and to increase the temperature produced. What we're doing today is making thermite from magnetite, which is an iron oxide commonly found in the ground. Its chemical formula is Fe3O4, which means that per mole it has a little bit more iron than regular rust or red iron oxide does. While this is good for us to produce more iron from the thermite reaction, it doesn't mean that it's going to get any hotter than regular red iron oxide thermite. If anything, it's going to be a little bit cooler just because there isn't as much oxygen to oxidize the aluminum powder. And that means that per gram of the thermite, it's not going to be as energetic. To extract our magnetite from the dirt, the only thing that I'll need is a regular magnet. My magnet is a powerful N52 neodymium magnet, but you can use really any magnet to do this. Magnetite is naturally ferromagnetic, which means that a powerful magnet such as mine will easily separate it out from just regular dirt. What I do to make this process a little bit easier is submerge the magnet inside a plastic bag into a bucket of mud and move the magnet around into the muddy sludge at the bottom. While the magnetite is pulled out of the mud and onto the magnet, everything else just settles at the bottom. With the crude magnetite stuck onto the surface of the magnet, we can pull it out of the water and transfer it into a separate container. Doing this several times with many kilos of dirt yields us enough magnetite to make our thermite. To purify our magnetite, we use a gold pan to separate out the layers of pure magnetite from the less pure magnetite contaminated minerals. Just like gold in a gold pan settles to the bottom because it's the densest thing in nature, magnetite is the second densest thing commonly found. Meaning that if I was gold panning, it would be right above the gold, but since I don't really have any gold around me, the magnetite should be the only thing that settles at the bottom of the pan. Sure enough, as we let the sediment settle by density, the magnetite rests at the bottom, while the contaminated sand of rocks and minerals can be separated by swishing around and then decanting the top portion of water. Now that we have a relatively pure magnetite, we can begin the process of grinding it up into a fine powder. Since there's no concern about magnetite catching on fire or pyrophoricity, I'm just using stainless steel ball bearings. Even though there's a minute chance that thermite would be able to ignite with ball bearings just striking one another and possibly creating sparks, I do not recommend you put aluminum powder into a ball mill. The aluminum in itself is very capable of becoming pyrophoric under these conditions. After grinding the magnetite for several days, I found that I probably would need some water to help the grinding continue. The magnetite was becoming clumped onto the ball bearings, and water was really the only solution I could think of to get it off. While this might have helped the magnetite become a finer powder, it certainly did not help the drying process. After leaving the powdered magnetite out for several days to weeks, I found that the water really wasn't evaporating, which was strange because it was quite warm when I was doing this. I doubt that magnetite is hygroscopic in nature, but it certainly was reluctant to give up any water content. In the end, I just threw into the oven and all the water was gone in a matter of hours. I crushed the mix of the ball bearings and magnetite up and I began to sift it through a fine mesh. And at this point we can see just how dark the magnetite became as it was crushed further. 
With our pure and powdered magnetite ready to go, the only thing that we need for our thermite is aluminum powder. Now going along with the theme of the video making thermite from dirt, it just so happens that I live within walking distance of an old aluminum mine. While not very well known, aluminum is actually quite abundant in its elemental form if you're in the right areas. As you can see, within about a foot of digging, I hit a real nice pocket of aluminum and this will do quite nicely for a thermite. Holy shit! <laughs> That tastes like some 5 micron aluminum powder. With both our magnetite and aluminum powder on hand, we can make the mixture with the ratio 3.22 to 1 magnetite to aluminum powder, which will be our thermite. Since I want to collect any iron produced in the thermite reaction, I will be doing it inside of a terracotta pot vessel. Thank you guys for watching. Please do like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.